Our first caller for the show calls it like it is and was a hard-hitting look back at the last days on earth from the perspective of a shrewd businessman and loving father. Stories, memories, the good old days. Original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, drama. Radio Nostalgia from Mars. I worked in oil, brokering gasoline to be exact. It's a strange business, uh, probably not like you would actually imagine it to be. My day started something like this. I check Reuters and my sheets. See if there's been a change in the fundamentals. See if the spread's up or down. And then when the clock strikes go, I'm on the phone. I could be calling some commercial shop in Bumble, Kansas, where little old Sue loves to know how my daughter's doing. Or I could be trying to get into the head of a powerful Russian who knows the world wants his phone number. That's when the psychology kicks in, and I go to work. If they pick up the phone, they're mine. That's the game. I started when I was uh, 29, 30. <laughs> My boss. My boss was a coked up, permatanned moron who was wasted by lunch. More money than sense. Screaming at waiters, because, uh, you don't drink gin out of a glass like that. And Caesar salad is supposed to have eight pieces. Eight pieces of chicken, you stunted fool. Stunted fool was his favorite insult. It's coming from a guy who was five foot nothing. That was pretty much my life, 24 seven. I traveled a lot, meeting clients all over the world. The Amazon, the Gulf, Siberia, Central Asia, the States, Singapore, everywhere. Looking back, I can't claim that I ever would recommend that life, nor can I claim that I was ever really happy doing it. But it was fun. I mean, talk about your share of moments. There was this one girl, some strange mix of Algiers and Paris, with some sprinkle of Havana, a dancer, naturally. It was so pretty. She'd turn a priest's head or give a nun a Sometimes I wonder what happened to her. But we all had the same feeling. This can't last. And sure enough, we were right. First, you couldn't drink the water. Then you couldn't eat the crops. And pretty soon, we wouldn't be able to breathe the f***ing air. I remember looking at Amy and wondering what kind of a future would she have. So I decided to do something about it. The Mars project was plan B for planet Earth, which was most evidently f The family and I had already put down roots in Tesla City by the time the great catastrophe really hit. The corporation knew my contacts in the world of drilling and refining would be useful, so I adapted my skills to something more practical. Now we are all that keeps this little planet running. Mining those Martian chemicals for the battery banks, Martian cement for the buildings. My pure little Emma has a future. When somebody sits down and writes this all up for the history books, it might just be men like me they'll be hailing as heroes. It's men like me who saved humanity. Men like me who took us further than we ever dreamt possible. Wow, some pretty heavy stuff. Reminds us that all kinds made it up here to Mars. But we're all in it together now and remain creatures of the world.